So today we're going to be talking about the pupil in relation to something that ophthalmologists don't see in the clinic, obviously, but he might be called to the floor in a patient who is comatose. So we really got two types of pupil problems here. Problems when the pupil is a different size, and chorea is our pupil word. Iso means same, and an means not. So not the same size pupil. So when we got a big one and a small one. And then the, the other way is when we have isochoric pupils, they're the same size, but they're still abnormal. So pupils can be normal or abnormal. They can be abnormal and isochoric, or they can be abnormal and anisochoric, different size pupils. So when you're dealing with the big and the small pupil, the main considerations are, am I dealing with a problem with the parasympathetic nervous system, or am I dealing with a problem with the sympathetic nervous system? The sympathetic nervous system dilates your pupil, and the parasympathetic constricts your pupil. This is mediated on the third nerve for the parasympathetic and for the oculosympathetic pathway for the sympathetics, which is the Horner syndrome. And so one of the first things we're going to do in an anisochoria is determine, am I dealing with the big pupil problem or a small pupil problem? We're going to test the light reaction. And if the light reaction is poor, it doesn't constrict, then that's the bad pupil. If the light reaction is good in both eyes and the anisochoria is greater in the dark, that means it's not dilating properly, and that is a sympathetic reading. So if it's a dilation problem in the dark with a normal light reaction, the anisochoria is greater in the dark, that's Horner syndrome. And obviously, patients who have a Horner syndrome and are comatose have a lesion somewhere disrupting the sympathetic pathway all the way from the hypothalamus down to the spinal cord, but usually that means they have a, a brainstem lesion, and so a bilateral or a unilateral Horner syndrome can occur in patients who have a structural lesion from being in comatose. Third nerve palsy is also a bad thing to see in a patient who has a coma because the anisochoria usually indicates that we have a parasympathetic problem in the third nerve. And the main concern here is that they're herniated. So uh, the third nerve travels from the midbrain ventrally and then passes into the subarachnoid space. In that location, we can get a herniation syndrome because the tentorium is rigid and the third nerve right, runs right at that location and that is called Kernahan's notch. So at the notch in the tentorium, the cranial nerve number three passes. And so, it, as you know, in the NICU, the neurosurgical intensive care unit, the nurses are always checking the pupil. And what they're looking for is anisochoria and a blown pupil from third nerve palsy is evidence that we might having a herniation syndrome and that person is obviously going to be an acute onset of their coma status and it is an emergency. That is what we call a false localizing sign because the herniation is actually super tentorial but there's you see the pupil problem and that means the third nerve but it's from herniation of the brains uh, down into the Kernahan notch. You could also have it bilaterally and that is a very bad sign. So fixed and dilated pupils bilaterally, very bad sign in comatose patients, be thinking about herniation syndromes, but those also could be lesions anywhere along the third nerve, that means the midbrain. And if we have isochoric pupils, they can both be big or they can both be small. If they're both small, that's pinpoint pontine pupil. So that normally means something's wrong with the pons. If it's big and bilateral isochoric, that usually mean midbrain pupils. Both are bad. So these are brainstem signs that we should be looking for. The last thing you should be aware of is sometimes people have anisochoria because it's pharmacologic, but usually by accident. The most common thing that we see is scopolamine, which is usually a patch that's put behind their ear to reduce the nausea. And then some unsuspecting nurse or family member or even the patient themselves, if they're not comatose, touches their eye and they get a blown pupil. It'll get mistaken for the Kernahan notch. And also the inhalers. The most common is the atropine-based inhalers, ipotropium bromide, atrovent. The atrovent inhaler has atropine, and that'll dilate your pupil if the inhaler is blasting your eye instead of blasting your nose. So in summary, if you've got a pupil abnormality and you're comatose, it's a bad sign. We'd like to make sure it's not pharmacologically dilated because that might lead to inappropriate interventions. However, if it's a big pupil, the anisocoria is going to be greater in the light. If it's a small pupil problem, greater in the dark. The light problem is parasympathetics, that's third nerve, 
than the Horner syndrome for the dark. If it's isochoric and poorly reactive, pinpoint, that's pinpoint pontine pupils, they often have spastic tetraparesis and hyperreflexia. If, however, it's isochoric and big pupils, that's usually a midbrain problem, third nerve again. And you should be worried about the false localizing sign, the herniation sign, the Kernahan's notch phenomenon in a patient who's acute coma.